What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest Academy Award Best Picture list. This is of course a series where I focus on Academy Award Best Picture winners. Obviously recently I did Academy Award uh, Worst Best Picture winners in my eyes where I got all the number 10 picks um, from each decade and then put them in a pile and ranked them. This time around I'm doing the same thing except the opposite in some ways. This time I'm putting all the number one picks that I ranked in my eyes as the number one of each decade and put it in a pile and then voila, here we go. So thankfully in the Academy Awards there's been 10 decades so it works out perfectly. Number 10 is going to be the number one Best Picture winner that I liked the least and then my number one is going to be the number one Best Picture winner um, of at least all the number one picks from each decade. So. Hopefully that makes sense. If you've been a part of this series from the beginning, you definitely will know what I'm going for. If not, you might be a little confused, um, in which case, comment section down below if you have any questions. But all that exposition aside, let's get started, guys, and kick things off with my number 10, which is Wings. Uh, yeah, Wings was my number one for the 1920s, and this movie's okay. I respect it. But it's by no means a movie I can see myself watching over and over again. Um, I respect what it did for cinema, but that's about it, honestly. Um, yeah, that's why it's my number 10. My number 9 is It Happened One Night, which is a great movie. Um, it, it truly is a masterful movie, which is why I feel bad that I have it as number 9. But there were eight other movies I thought were better. But in terms of groundbreaking movies, I mean, this, this is pretty much one of the pinnacle uh, romantic comedies that set the the plateau for all the other romantic comedies to fall flat on their faces with attempting to master what had happened one night achieved. Um, great movie, you know, that's why again I feel bad that it's number nine, but it's still amazing. Um, so that's my number nine. My number eight is The Best Years of Our Lives, which I've only seen one time, and that was about six, seven years ago, but I loved it. Uh, I absolutely loved it. I am looking to rewatch it sometime soon, but I remember being really engrossed by it. It's, it's almost a three hour movie, but I was really engrossed by everything that was occurring. I thought it was very topical. Um, I thought it aged quite well. I'm curious upon a rewatch how much I like it as well, but I loved it personally. That's why it's again my number eight. Excuse me. Um, so that's my number eight. My number seven is On the Waterfront, which I think the reason why On the Waterfront I gave it a little bit, just by a little bit hair um, over the best years of our lives is because On the Waterfront, the messages are just as important and the filmmaking is just as great, but I think it's like an hour shorter. Um, on the Waterfront also is just one of those movies that I feel like anyone can watch and really love. And I think that's one of the great things about, you know, the director, Eli Kazan, I think it was. He was just a great director, you know. He really knew how to pull performances out from actors. And Marlon Brando gave a great performance in that movie. Um, it's aged very well. Um, I, I saw it five years ago, five, six years ago. I do need to rewatch it. I remember loving it, though. And, uh, yeah, that's why it's my number seven. My number six is Midnight Cowboy, which I also absolutely love. I adore this movie so much. I'm looking to pick it up on Criterion sometime soon. I think it's a great movie. Really, really aging like a fine wine. Um, it's beautiful. It's heartbreaking in all the right ways. It's also a movie that, when I saw it, I think it was, what, five years ago? I was late to it, unfortunately. I don't know why, either. I waited so long to see it, because when you watch it once, you really do remember it. It ages like a fine wine. That's why it's my number six. My number five is Amadeus. This movie is amazing. I think I saw it two, three years ago. It might have been right before I got Letterboxd, or it might have been when I first got Letterboxd, and I didn't for some reason log in like older movies. I only logged in like movies that were in theaters for some reason. I don't know, it was strange times. But Amadeus is, it's, it's truly outstanding, honestly. I love the director, it's the same director that they won't play with the cuckoo's nest. Um, Amadeus, the extra 20 minutes of the director's cut really add to it as someone that has seen the theatrical cut and then the director's cut a couple years ago. I do think those 20 minutes are well worth your time. Um, either way, if you watch either, either, either you know, cut, both are amazing movies. There, it, it really is a work of art. That's why it's my number five. My number four is No Country for Old Men. Love this movie. Uh, I do think There Will Be Blood should have won Best Picture, but still, this is a masterpiece. And it, it's one of the best thrillers out there. It really took me by surprise with the twist at the end. And the ending is like a gut punch. And each time you watch it, it really is something where you recognize and pick up on certain details that it's like, oh, 
I didn't notice that before, and the filmmaking is off the charts. Truly an amazing movie. That's why it's my number four. So the top three, I'm just going to say this right now, is definitely subjective, because I think that if we went with popularity, it would be a little bit different, but we're not going for popularity, we're going for my picks. So my number three is Moonlight. Uh, yes, uh, I picked this up on 4K, uh, I think it was beginning of quarantine, but this has quickly become one of my all-time favorite movies, honestly. I think that this movie is honestly sad, heartbreaking, emotional, in all the right ways. It also is groundbreaking cinema, if you ask me personally. Um, I still remember just thinking it was good. I still can't believe I thought it was just good, because each time I watch it, I find myself really embracing everything about it and really kind of noticing all these uh, details. You know, much in the same way as No Country for Old Men, but in a different kind of way, honestly, because this is more of a drama than No Country for Old Men being more of a thriller. But the drama is really oozing with details, and honestly, I don't see this movie like being one of those Oscar winners like where people are like, oh, that doesn't age well. I see this as one where it ages even better over time, and that's amazing. That's why it's my number three. My number two is The Godfather, part one. I gotta emphasize that, because uh, I do own the whole box set. But yeah, the first Godfather is my number two. Um, I love this movie. I think this movie's incredible. I honestly almost put Moonlight over The Godfather, which I know would've gotten a lot of people angry, but the reason why I put The Godfather a little bit higher in terms of this list specifically is because The Godfather, it was revolutionary, you know? I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like, if, if Godfather were to come out today, it would be looked at as, like, a, a movie that would make maybe $20 million at the box office. It would be, like, an independent hit, but that's about it. I don't see The Godfather being a movie that, in today's day and age, would become popular and, like, be a huge box office success. This is a timely movie. This is a movie that came out during the right time and ended up becoming one of the highest-grossing movies for inflation. It's impressive, and it really does kind of show how much cinema's changed from the 70s to now. 50 years, a lot's changed, unfortunately, for cinema. But that's for another video altogether. But yeah, that's my number two. My number one, I'm sure many of you already probably knew what it would be. Uh, but my number one, as of right now, is American Beauty. Uh, yeah, I, I love this movie. I think it's a, a work of art, and more importantly, it's a perfect blend of drama and comedy. You know, there are so many times in reviews where I always kind of call out comedies for not being able to blend comedy and drama. Yet for some reason, American Beauty is able to just, you know, walk that tightrope with ease. And it's truly immaculate, you know, with the presentation of the movie. It's two hours and two minutes, so it's a two hour movie that is structured with the three act structure, obviously. But it works so well, man, it really does. And it flows with ease. It's a perfectly paced movie. It really is flawless. Like, when people say this movie hasn't aged well, I have to look at them like, huh? Doesn't make much sense to me, because I think it's aged very well, in fact. And I am hoping it gets a 4K release one of these days, because, yeah, it looks great on Blu-ray, but, I mean, my goodness, imagine a 4K release of this. Be pretty cool. But, yeah, that's my number one. Guys, that's obviously my uh, my list. Top 10 Academy Award Best Picture winners ranked. Uh, keep in mind... I might be doing a top 10 favorite Academy Award Best Picture winners where I won't be roped into like, you know, putting all the 10s in a pile and then ranking them or all the number ones in a pile. This would be pretty much kind of like freestyle where I just pick my 25 favorite Academy Award Best Picture winners. So it might contradict a little bit this list as well as some of the other lists, but you know, at the end of the day, keep in mind all these other lists have been a combination of my personal taste. Um, you know, entertainment value, critically speaking. So, you know, it's going to be even more of that, though, in terms of top 25. But I might do that, or I might just, you know, rank all 93 Academy Award Best Picture winners, which I've been playing around back and forth as of right now. I might break that up into one, two, three, four parts. Who knows? We'll see. But anyways, guys, let me know your top 10 Academy Award Best Picture winners ranked um, down below. And as always, don't forget subscription, notification bell, and I'll... Uh, Catch you guys later.